With a slouch that oozed charisma and a voice like gravel dipped in molasses, Robert Mitchum wasn't your typical Hollywood leading man. He carved his own path, becoming a legend of film noir and a master of playing the morally ambiguous anti-hero. From his steely gaze in Out of the Past to the chilling menace he brought to the Night of the Hunter, Mitchum left an indelible mark on cinema, forever redefining what it meant to be a movie star. Robert Mitchum was one of Hollywood's foremost actors in the 1940s and 1950s, appearing in a wide variety of genres from light comedy to westerns. Today, he is largely remembered for his leading roles as an anti-hero in movies of the film noir style and for his startling portrayal of Harry Powell, the terrifying false preacher in Night of the Hunter in 1955. He had a unique, instantly recognisable screen presence, naturally charismatic, appearing at times to be slow and lazy, and at other times to be sharp, witty and sophisticated, often in the same role. He was versatile enough to successfully make the transition to television later on in his career, and he appeared in the highly popular series The Winds of War in 1983 and War and Remembrance in 1988. For his performance in Story of G.I. Joe in 1945, Mitchum received his only Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. He was placed at number 23 on the 50 Greatest Screen Legends by the American Film Institute. He was born Robert Charles Derman Mitchum on August 6, 1917 in Bridgeport, Connecticut. His father died in a rail yard accident when he was two years old. His mother married an English naval officer and Robert and his elder sister and younger brother were brought up by his mother and stepfather. Mitchum was a mischievous child, often in trouble for joking and fighting. He lived with his grandparents in Felton, Delaware from the age of 12 in 1929, but was expelled from his school there. He went to live in New York with his sister, Juliet, and attended Haran High School, but again his misbehavior got him expelled. He left his sister's home and ran wild to the point of delinquency. He spent several years riding the rails, traveling the country on railroad cars and taking whatever work he could find, including ditch digging and professional boxing. In 1932, he was arrested in Savannah, Georgia and put on a chain gang, but escaped and went back to riding the rails. In 1936, Mitchum moved to Long Beach, California and lived with his sister Julie. It was Julie who persuaded her brother to go to the local drama group, the Players Guild of Long Beach. For a few years, this was the dramatic home of the future Hollywood star who earned pin money there as an occasional scenery mover and walk-on bit player. In 1940, he married Dorothy, his childhood sweetheart, and after the birth of their first child, Jim, he recognized the need to settle down and he got a machinist job at the nearby Lockheed Aircraft Factory, but had to quit after suffering bouts of temporary blindness caused by job stress. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. In 1942, he began to obtain roles as an extra in the Hopalong Cassidy series as well as other B-films, mainly westerns or war films, and he appeared in dozens during the next two years, mainly uncredited. Typical of the genre were Happy Serves a Writ and Lone Star Trail in 1943 and the propaganda film Mr. Winkle Goes to War in 1944. In one of his movies in 1944, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, starring Spencer Tracy, Mitchum made a strong impression and was given a seven-year contract with RKO Pictures. He was given a bigger role in the Western Nevada later in the year, and in 1945, on loan from RKO to United Artists, he appeared in The Story of G.I. Joe, a film which followed the life of Mitchum playing an ordinary G.I. through the eyes of a journalist played by Burgess Meredith. The movie was a success at the box office and was acclaimed by the critics. Mitchum received an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor and instantly achieved star status. After a brief stint in the Army Medical Corps, Mitchum completed two more films, 
West of the Picos, a Western, and Till the End of Time, a war film, before making a series of movies during the rest of the 1940s in a genre at which he would excel, film noir. Most of the noir films are crime or gangster based and his first successes were The Locket in 1946 and Pursued the following year. Crossfire also released in 1947 includes themes of anti-Semitism and the failings of army training. The film directed by Edward Dimtrick received five Academy Award nominations and combined with his next movie, the powerful noir classic Out of the Past, propelled Mitchum into the superstar status. Mitchum's rugged, anti-social, anti-hero persona was enlivened by a real-life pot possession bust in September 1948. After serving a week in the county jail, Mitchum then spent over a month at a Californian prison farm. The conviction was later overturned by the Los Angeles Court and District Attorney's Office in 1951. Despite this, or maybe because of it, Mitchum's next films, Rachel and the Stranger and The Red Pony in 1948 and 1949's The Big Steel were all top box office successes. Mitchum attained the pinnacle of his stardom during the 1950s, although even during this decade of success, the films were seldom as riveting as the man himself. After another noir film, Where Danger Lives, in 1950, he acted as leading man during the early 1950s to a succession of beautiful actresses, such as Jane Russell in Macau, Linda Darnell in Second Chance, Jean Simmons in Angel Face, and Ava Gardner in My Forbidden Past. 1952 saw Mitchum free of his RKO contract and he was freelancing when he appeared with Marilyn Monroe in 1954's River of No Return, which was a major box office hit and even that was outshone the following year by Not As A Stranger, which was one of 1955's biggest hits. 1955 also saw the release of The Night of the Hunter, the movie in which Mitchum gives what is generally regarded as his greatest performance. It was the only film directed by actor Charles Lawton and Mitchum starred as Harry Powell, a psychotic criminal posing as a preacher. It is a compelling and chilling drama which was strangely panned by the critics on first release but is now regarded as a landmark film of the decade and Mitchum's performance has gained in stature in the years since then. After several forgettable run-of-the-mill movies, Mitchum starred in 1957 with Deborah Kerr in the John Huston-directed Heaven Knows Mr. Allison, showing a gentler side to his acting abilities and for which he was nominated for a BAFTA award for Best Foreign Actor. In 1960, he was named Best Actor of the Year by the National Board of Review for The Sundowners, again with Deborah Kerr, and then for Home from the Hill. He gave another powerful performance as the psychopathic ex-con in the original Cape Fear in 1962 and played a notable role in The Longest Day in the same year. But for most of the 1960s, he appeared in mediocre, forgettable movies which really used his unique screen presence to its fullest. The 1970 David Lean film, Ryan's Daughter, saw Mitchum in a new type of role as a mild-mannered schoolteacher in Ireland at the start of The Troubles. He was originally one of the favourites for an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor, and although the movie was nominated for four Academy Awards, winning two, Mitchum missed out. He continued to make some good movies. He gave a superb performance in 1973's The Friends of Eddie Coyle, and he was ideally suited to play Private I, Philip Marlowe, in Farewell, My Lovely, which was a big hit in 1975. In the 1980s, Mitchum followed some of his contemporaries by moving to television. He was the star of the mammoth miniseries The Winds of War in 1983, which became the most watched TV program in history. He followed it up five years later with the less successful War and Remembrance. There followed some more very average movies and more TV, including commercials. 
1991, the National Board of Review of Motion Pictures presented him with a Lifetime Achievement Award, and in 1992, he won the Cecil B. DeMille Award from the Golden Globe Awards. Robert Mitchum passed away on July 1, 1997 in Santa Barbara, California from lung cancer and emphysema. He was 79 years old. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite Robert Mitchum movie that you like the most or perhaps a moment in his career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.